Welcome back to Gran Hercamito in the Pedroche Valley of Andalusia, Spain. This is going to be a quick walk about the compound and surrounding areas to give you an update on a few things like those trees here next to the yurt. We had some trouble with the other generator. Needs some maintenance. And as we cannot be without electricity, we got this one here yesterday. I had to drive all the way to Cordoba, 120 kilometers one way. And I was very lucky to find this one here. It was pretty cheap, just 700 euros. And it is basically the same engine, the same, yeah, the same power as the other one. With the exception that this one needs to be started manually. It has no ATS, it's called, so the inverter cannot start it. One has to go outside and push a button, but then it will work. We need to make sure to have a generator that is working, because here and there the solar panels do not provide enough electricity for our consumption. We definitely need to have twice the amount of solar panels. So to give you a number, we have 16 and uh, our inverter can accept up to 18 and we should have 18 more but we could do this easily but it requires some welding and welding is absolutely prohibited during summer because it may easily create a wildfire so there are heavy fines and uh, this is not a very good idea to do so once the rain is there and we have the time for that then we will build some additional structure and add a few more panels so that this thing is not really needed but still it's good to have two of these just in case the experiment here is proceeding it is looking very very good you can see one of the palovnia trees here and it is getting pushed a little bit aside but it also has angled the leaves in order to receive sun especially from early morning on because that is where it's pointed to and what is also interesting to notice that basically all the plants are going at the same rate they are all of the same height so that is this Miyawaki effect. They all push upwards and try to find the light. Down here, you can spot there between the corn, also a Palovnia tree. The leaves are small, but the color is right. So this tree is not tall, but it's not dying either. So that's a positive sign. And to give you an idea, so if I stand next to this, you can see where my leg is. And if I now show you to, for comparison, that is how high these plants are, not, are by now. So they basically have September to continue growing and then probably they will start dying off because it's getting cold. At the end of September, going into October, the temperatures usually drop. And by then, we should see all of that around green up. And I'm walking towards this end here to show you another Palovnia. See, this one has bigger leaves because there's not so much other stuff around. And the same goes for that. But this one has the leaves pointed towards the afternoon sun while the one on the other end wants to get the morning sun. So they all figured out somehow. Here there is another one. The big dark leaves. And of course there are some in between but I cannot show you them easily because then I would have to go in there and trample on things but we will see how they manage when the other stuff has died off and what I can show you here it's 
hope the autofocus of the camera is able to catch that. Maybe if I bend them a little bit, you can see their Cynodondactylon, the Bermuda grass, which is also growing. So maybe I can take you into the forest. Let's see what the camera will find. I'm doing this blind. I hope it gives an interesting perspective, depending on what the autofocus does. So I'm very happy with this experiment and we know that this is going to be the way how we do this in spring when we can plant more of these. We also did receive some new straw. That is probably the last truckload that we need before everything gets green and we have our own forage. Today the sky looks like that and there is wind and maybe something will develop when we get a few drops of rain but you never know. The forecast says cloudy but does not talk about rain so who knows. The Palovnia tree is over there they grow. They probably also by now have reached a water source. Of course this is not the perfect place for them, but uh, their presence should help to loosen up the soil when there is enough mulch on top, bacteria are supposed to do the job. And over here all that vetiver we want to cut soon and use it for mulch in the wannabe food forest which is on the other side so in here the guys tomorrow want to cut all the stuff that is not of direct value to us humans but to the soil and place it on the ground as mulch so that when the rain comes it can break down and feed the soil and therefore feed the trees um, the vetiver in here we don't cut just yet, we let it grow until it wants and then this will also be mulch. Walking here also does feel different than it used to be. So the ground is still not perfect, far from it, but it feels softer, especially when I come to places like this one here. Of course it makes a cracking sound when I step on these, uh, not this plant material, but it's not as bad as in the beginning. And here the Palovnias, with a few exceptions of two or three, they are growing, which is very good. And they should provide additional biomass going forward. Those were the ones that we have that we had left over. We had some issues during summer, uh, during early summer, couldn't plant them. And then the rats ate the leaves. Then we had to wait until the leaves grew back. And now we have them planted here and it looks like they are establishing themselves. So that is very good. And let me also show this. We have two young cats in a cage. This is the guy's attempt, one of several, to have some cats in here. Um, we need to keep them in a cage, because if we don't, then they will venture out into the compound, which is right over there. And there, eight very naughty dogs will hunt them down, and then that would be very sad. Mr. Cat is also around, not right now, but he did survive because he learned to avoid the dogs. Here and there when the dogs are locked away in their enclosure, he ventures out into the compound and goes uh, into our makeshift shop. 
but then he is big and he can run and he can climb and jump and therefore not so interesting but these little kiddies they have no idea so for it's for their own safety that we keep them here in this cage and of course the other idea same as with mr cat um is that they learn that this is the place to be and there's food and water and all that while over there is the danger zone so kitties need to understand to stay here and as you can see they have a hard time understanding that they like to get out of here and that's part of the problem but hopefully they will also understand that the world is dangerous if you are that small maybe not the perfect solution but at least it should stop them from digging a hole there it's not for their benefit to get out of this This tree here you have seen in earlier videos when it created flowers. Now it looks a little bit ruffled. It did not receive the same amount of moisture as usual. And there is no irrigation nearby either. So only when the trench behind floods, then there is moisture. Of course the idea is that all this will save a lot of water. But if there is none coming, remember we had left uh, half of the rainfall that we usually get during spring. So that is the result, but this tree knows about the drought and it is around. It's a nitrogen fixer and it's a support species, but of course what is missing is the trees that were originally left and right. So I hope this autumn we can add a few and make this more the food forest it wants to be and then of course it was just planted in the hurry just to get something going and see how it looks like without much consideration or planning and well you learn by doing so i in that case did and now we know a lot more this here is the poisonous i think it was record so this will be cut for mulch i don't mind it growing here the cows and all the other ruminants know what it is and avoid it but it's biomass and therefore it is welcome when it breaks down so we let it grow and then cut it down and i would think that this hazelnut here is done this will not come back it's not the right plant in this area but this one here is coming back, as you can see, and there was another one. Yeah, there it is. It's a pomegranate, and you see the other one here is also coming back. The squashes that were here where you see the drip irrigation line, they did not make it. Lack of water, lack of nutrients shade so that's not the place and there was also a little tomato but yeah it was in there but it's not there anymore so that also failed and here there was also a few squashes and same thing the vetiver on the other hand let's make it wider um is growing well this is there so that we can have it as much just by cutting it and yeah chop and drop in place that tree created some offspring which is also there this got a little bit dry but the other one is green on the top um, we will see how this goes and I said squash so there is a squash um, partially it is yellow 
and partially it is green so I think problem was water not nutrients and uh, something small developing so I think I should turn on the water again or maybe we get a few baby squashes I am not sure which variety this one is but we will see the tomatoes here in this place are not thriving and then this is the problem we don't really have a routine in place to maintain a garden so if we wanted to sell vegetables that would be a total failure we need to learn how to do this properly but in here there is something growing that can also become a product so you see this is the red missile and it's getting red and red yeah, red and redder and at some point we can then harvest it I did this already with a few that are very red and they are drying in the sun and hopefully we can do this with a lot of them so the idea is to harvest them vacuum seal them they are very spicy so just three in a small bag and once I'm done with the programming of the shop almost but the first part because of all the infrastructure is always the hardest then you guys can actually have some of these you know, as a test for the shop so we will pop them up for sale once they are ready and of the tomatoes here I also did taste a few and they were very delicious but I guess this whole thing needs water again and I understand and I also observed this when the water is on and off and it gets dry and wet this is not really good for the tomatoes they like an even supply of water so I need to turn this on there's even a tomato plant down here in order to provide us with a little bit of a tomato harvest so we need to get more and more into plants and get organized and have the right type of irrigation and I hope in a little while I can learn how to automate this I have done some research and this will all be done but right now this is the manual job and things are a little bit difficult to move but now water is coming out so what I want to do is I want to add some um, yeah, shut off valves that can be remotely controlled. I'm thinking about LoRaWAN if somebody of you understands what it means. It's a type of wireless technology where you can send data packets. And then we have an antenna somewhere. And we can control all kinds of sensors and devices out in the field requires some software and some infrastructure need to have a local server here to manage all that and then my own software can report that water is flowing by means of a flow sensor in the pipe open and close the valve and then we know how much water is being used where and then the tomatoes will get the right supply one thing at a time this is not the most important thing but of course I would love to have it because doing it manually is error prone and it's boring the other one is a lot more fun down there that is the doggy's favorite place during the hot day they are somewhere all under the house because the air conditioning on the inside makes it cool and of course it's out of the sun so they all 
like to hide in there. But I wanted to show you something else. So these boxes here were used to transport all the meat from the two bovines that were suspected to have tuberculosis. It turned out they did not. But the suspicion is enough to get them killed by order of the veterinarians. And I wanted to show you something inside that freezer. So this is a very large freezer and we got a lot of bags of meat like this one here, it's pretty heavy and what we also have is this so this is basically a bone-in prime rib it's a little bit hard to see through the plastic but here you might be able to see a little bit better what it is and once the shop is working and something happens you can then learn about it and actually have some of this so the idea is not that you can order beef well you could maybe get on a waiting list but the idea is if something happens instead of filling this we can share so it's not meat production it's more something happens two animals fight one cannot walk and it goes off for slaughter because that's the sensible thing to do in that case and in that case the shop will then tell you that you can have some of it so what is in there is four and a half year old bovine and only grass fed grass finished they never saw any grain of any kind and the alfalfa pellets are basically a replacement for the grass so this is the real deal and the meat is very delicious especially when you cook it sous vide and once we get around to cook the prime rib in the oven uh, we have an ANOVA oven that also uses vapor so it should be very delicious with a sensor inside the meat I will hopefully think about you guys and share how it came out unfortunately I cannot transfer the taste through this media here but I expect it to be delicious so I give you another shot of this area here we did not graze in here because of the trees and we boned so we have to find out a way how to crimp this down somehow so that it decomposes better but this is how this area looks like and you can also see there in the distance let me try to zoom in a few square bales of straw um, we originally wanted to bale graze there but then we had trouble with the fencing which is why we locked them up in CT1 with a lot of straw so they are adding their manure there but soon this will all be fixed and then grazing on green pastures will start again so I think this is going to be a short video and I will end it here so that you have an update and by tomorrow I hope I can film a little bit more of the work that is being done by tomorrow we got the material today in A7 which is where soon the pigs will get to work on the old straw and to add the biomass to the soil so that this gets ready for seeding and the pigs will help us seed their own food which they will then harvest by the end of November, mid-December, including some acorns that will fall from the trees that are in that area. But that is going to be in the next video.